Have you heard of the cassowary? Take a look. The cassowary is native to Papua New Guinea and Australia. It's the third heaviest bird in the world and eats mostly fruit. It has been called the world's most dangerous bird. Is it hard to believe that this big, fluffy-looking fruit eater of a bird could be called the world's most dangerous bird? Its secret lies in what it uses to defend itself. God designed animals with different body parts that they use to ward off predators. Today, we'll be answering this question. What body parts do animals use for defense? Go ahead and read to find out why a cassowary is considered the world's most dangerous bird. What specific body part does it use to defend itself? Do you remember what the term adaptation means? Adaptation is a characteristic of a living thing that helps it to survive in its environment. What is the difference between a scientist with a biblical view and a scientist with an evolutionary view of adaptation? Can you remember? Well, scientists with a biblical view believe God created animals with the ability to adapt and that the characteristics are passed down from parents to their offspring. However, scientists with an evolutionary view believe that animals can evolve or change over time into completely different kinds of animals. They believe that animals have the ability to adapt, but they believe that adaptation leads to an animal evolving into a completely different kind of animal. Two very different views. So why does a scientist with a biblical view believe that animals had to adapt? Well, scientists with a biblical worldview believe that animals were created to eat plants, not meat. After the fall, sin brought death into the world and animals were able to eat meat. This also means that now animals had to protect themselves from other animals who wanted to eat them as meat. And that brings us to what we'll be learning about this lesson, structures that vertebrates use for defense against predators. As we learn about the different structures today, you'll be filling out student activities page 95. Take a look at that with me. That's right, it's another graphic organizer. As we talk about each animal listed, write down how the animal uses its particular defense structure to keep enemies away. Because there isn't much writing on this page, I won't be giving you time to pause this time. I trust you can pause the video if you need more time. You are in fourth grade after all. If you're unable to pause, however, feel free to finish this page after the video using your textbook. Instead of my showing you the answers this time, your adult will check the page after the lesson. Okay, let's talk about how animals defend themselves. Some animals, like this spotted skunk, use a nasty smelling liquid to deter hunters. They spray a cloud of odor behind them if a dangerous animal comes too close. This particular skunk also does handstands to make itself look bigger to predators and stomps on the ground. It's like he's saying, not only do I smell bad, but are you sure you can tackle something this huge? Go find yourself an easier meal. Skunks aren't the only animals to use liquids to defend themselves. Some snakes have venom or poison in their fangs. Just one bite from this king cobra could kill an elephant. With something as dangerous as that around, it's a good thing scientists have developed something called an anti-venin to help protect people from venomous snakes and other venomous animals such as spiders. Take a listen. After lunch today, Abby and I were cataloging more species in the Everglades. I was just going about my work when I came across a brown recluse. You know, the really poisonous spider. And I practically stepped on it. I mean, it was this close to my foot. The good news is that we're prepared. If I had gotten bit, Abby could have given me the antivenin. The word antivenin comes from the words anti, which means against, and venom, which is the poisonous liquid that animals use to defend themselves. So, antivenin works against the venom to heal your body from the venom's harmful effects. So how do scientists make this genius formula, you might ask? 
to make antivenin, a small amount of venom is removed from a poisonous animal and then put into another animal like a horse or a goat. After the animal builds up a defense to the venom, those defensive antibodies are collected and stored as antivenin in a small bottle like this one. A shot of the right antivenin should help someone who's suffering from a poisonous bite. This wonderful life-saving injection was first developed by Albert Calmet in 1895 to help with snake bites. A few years later, a Brazilian scientist, Vito Brazil, developed antivenin for venomous spider and scorpion bites. Thankfully, because of these two men, we can be protected on hikes like the one I went on today. So the next time you go on a hike, be careful where you step and make sure to always wear the proper hiking protection. This is one medical development that I hope that you never need to use. Wow, antivenin was quite the scientific breakthrough. I wonder how many lives have been saved by it since its creation. Mm, I'll have to research that later. Right now, though, let's look at animals that use claws and talons as their defensive structures. Remember this bird? The cassowary is called the most dangerous bird in the world, and now you know why. This bird has an impressive four-inch long claw on its first toe that can do major damage to an attacking predator. Luckily for those of you who live in Australia, these birds are relatively shy, but make sure to stay out of their territory all the same, just to be on the safe side. Eagles and other birds of prey use talons to protect themselves. These are the talons of a harpy eagle. Its talons are a whopping four to five inches long. That's the same as a grizzly bear's claws. Armadillos use claws as a defense as well, but instead of using them to fight, they use them to quickly dig and hide themselves. Do you have a pet dog? We used to have yellow labs. I love them. They were so much fun. Well, how do dogs defend themselves? If something came after my dog, would she use her claws to defend herself? Dogs do have claws, but they don't really use them to protect that much. They use their teeth. Dogs bare their teeth to frighten off enemies, and it's very effective. If you see a dog looking like this, stay away. They don't just use those teeth as a scare tactic. They also bite if they have to. Sharks are famous for their mouthful of teeth as well. Tusks are special kinds of teeth that some animals use to defend themselves. They're actually a pair of front teeth that stick out beyond an animal's mouth. Wild boars keep their tusks sharp daily, which make them a formidable force for a predator to take on. Elephants have tusks as well. Paired with their enormous size and strength, these tusks are an excellent defense against predators. Did you know that elephants have predators to worry about? They don't have many, but lions and crocodiles do often prey on young and sick elephants. Some animals have spines and quills to protect them. The porcupine fish turns itself into a prickly ball of spines when bothered or threatened. Hedgehogs are adorable, but if an animal tries to eat them, they also roll into a ball of spines. Porcupines, the land animal this time, not the fish, have a specific kind of spine called a quill. When you think of porcupines, what is the first thing you think of? You might immediately think of something like a porcupine defending itself by sticking its quills into an animal. But did you know that they first give animals a warning? They actually raise their quills to make themselves look bigger and meaner to potential predators. And then if the predator doesn't run away, then the porcupine charges backwards, swinging its tail at the animal. Isn't that cool? I know I wouldn't be able to defend myself very well running backwards, especially without quills. Okay, time for our quick check. How does God's design help vertebrates defend themselves? God designed each vertebrate with the structures it needs for protection. Let's look at our second question. How do vertebrates use spines and quills to defend themselves? Porcupine fish stick spines out to look larger and prickly, a porcupine raises its quills to scare predators or pierce their skin. That last question partially answers our essential question for this lesson. What body parts do animals use for defense? Sensory organs with liquids, claws and talons, teeth and tusks, and spines and quills.
You have a quiz today, so let's look at the study guide you'll be completing. You have only two sections on this study guide. First section says, write one sentence to explain how vertebrates use the given structures to defend against predators. Include an animal in your explanation. So here you have the given structures. These are the ones mentioned. You need to write one sentence explaining how a vertebrate uses that structure to defend itself. And the second section here simply says to answer the question, and I'll let you read that later. Remember to save this study guide for future study and do your best work on your quiz. Next lesson, we'll begin another STEM activity about biomimicry. See you then.